Welcome to Ask a Reporter Welcome. on this lovely Friday. I'm with Nat. Hello, I'm Nat and I'm with Amelia. I'm Amelia. Hello. <laughs> That's nice. We didn't even rehearse that. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us as per usual every Friday afternoon. If you are new to Ask a Reporter, thank you too for tuning in and to everyone who comes along every week to see us talk about things. We and appreciate for sending in having questions. you back. Thanks for yes, sending in questions. Yes, and thank you for sending in questions. Heaps of questions. A lot of questions, as always. If you're mm. a regular AAR uh, participant, you'll know how we get a lot of questions, and we will do our very best to answer them. Well, Nat will today. I'm leaving it to him. So, so here we go. Nat, let's talk about what we're talking about. So today's topic is the bombing of Darwin, <laughs> which happened on the 19th of February, 1942 in Darwin. Um, if you've seen the BTN story, it was the Japanese Imperial Navy that sent over um, heaps of planes to bomb Darwin to basically um, take it out and try and destroy as much of the buildings and um, uh, military stuff that they had in Darwin. Um, so yeah, that's what we're talking about today. Mm. Okay, so you actually just answered one question from Layla from Elmore Vale Public School. Hi, Layla. Um, what year was Darwin bombed? Just say it again. So Darwin was bombed in uh, 1942 on the 19th of February. Cool. So that was a uh, few years, three years into the war, yeah, at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and also a few people have asked quite a serious question. Um, so... They wanted to know actually how many people died in the bombings back in 1942. So Sophie from St Mary's Altona was wondering about that. Well, the among others, the number we have, the number that the historians I spoke to gave me was there was about 240 people that died, but they think that there were more than that. So 240 mm. people plus. Um, it's sad. And I, d I don't know if a lot of people, you can tell us whether you knew, I don't know if a lot of Australians know that much about the bombing of Darwin. I might be wrong, but I didn't really know that much about it yeah, until no, I actually that. did a BTN story a few years ago. Turn your phone off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard about that too. I yeah. think, I mean, I grew up in Darwin, so we were always told about the bombing of Darwin. But when I left home and I made friends in other states, I found out that it wasn't part of everybody's yeah. curriculum at school. Not everybody learnt it as much. Um, so I found that a bit interesting, yeah, because it is. it was the biggest attack on Australian soil. It was the first attack that we had in World War II. Um, so, yeah, in some ways it's, it's an important um, date to remember, but um, obviously the people of Darwin probably find it more important than maybe other other states I'm no, not but sure. it should be I think it should be something that we all know a little bit more about which yeah, is awesome that we're talking about so. it yeah mm. um, do people so people in Darwin know uh, everyone everyone obviously knows about it in Darwin it's just it's yeah thing. it's taught in yeah. schools yeah. yeah yeah and are there, are there any commemorations or anything that ever happens yeah. in Darwin e yeah. every year we have we have a few commemorations but the biggest one takes place at this memorial park in the city called the bicentennial park there's a big cenotaph there that overlooks the ocean where um, Japanese planes flew out after bombing Darwin. They actually flew into Darwin, did a little bit of a U-turn and flew back out over that water. So overlooking that water is the place that they have their commemoration services every year on the 19th of February. Um, it's very early in the morning, but when I was at school, um, I sometimes got picked to visit in, in part of our school group to, to go and lay a wreath on the cenotaph. Mm. So, yeah, every year that happens. Why'd you get picked? Because you're a good student? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe. <laughs> he doesn't want to admit it. I bet he was. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, do write into us and let us know if you are watching from Darwin or you're from Darwin um, or anywhere in the NT. We'd like to hear about that too. And if you've learnt about the bombing of Darwin in school, would, that'd be yes, awesome. Tell us about that as well. Oh. Okay. So let's throw you another question, Nat. We've got a whole bunch. Um, okay, so Jacob from St. Francis Xavier in Frankston. Hey, hey Jacob, um, Frankston, I assume you are in Victoria. Hope you're doing all right. Hope you're doing well. um, okay, so hi BTN. I was just wondering what type of bomb actually bombed Darwin? That's what Jacob would like to know. Well, that's a good question. There were a couple different planes, but there were the main bomb that was used I actually got to visit um, the Darwin Military Museum while I was in Darwin and they showed me a piece of the shrapnel 
piece of shrapnel from one of the bombs that actually blew up the Darwin Post Office. Yeah. So um, I spoke to a historian and we've got a short video to play you um, and hopefully he'll answer that question. Now you might not think much of this big hunk of metal, but it was part of the bomb that blew up the Darwin Post Office. What did the original bomb look like? Well, the original bomb would have looked uh, uh, identical to, to this one. It's a fragment of a Japanese 500-pound bomb that was um, said to have been dropped on the 19th of February 1942. Uh, whether it was in the first raid on that day or the second raid, we're not too sure about. But um, it's a piece of shrapnel, so when the bomb falls and the, uh, it detonates, the, uh, the bomb casing breaks up and it splinters off into pieces of steel that then go flying through the air at uh, almost the speed of sound and as you can see and if you pick that up it's quite weighty for the size of the metal and so it, uh, it really uh, caused a lot of damage. There you go. Mm. Pretty, pretty hope that was interesting. Interesting stuff. Big yeah. bombs, lots of shrapnel everywhere. It must have been really scary. Really scary. Mm. Oh, I'm trying to. Oh, I'm having technical problems. Oh, bear with us. Sorry, we'll find sorry. a question very soon. I want to. I want to see. Here we go. Just every time I zoom in, it goes to the. Oh, technology. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there, there she is. I just wanted to see. Um, Oh, I wanted to see if anyone was going to say they were from Darwin. No, no, but that's all right. Lily says we're awesome. Can I have a shout out, please? Lily from Winona. So there you go. Oh. Um, but no one has said yet that they are from Darwin. I was just going to see if anyone noticed. All right, so back to the questions anyway. Um, mm, yes. All right, so we have here. Uh, okay, this is um, Maimuna from Blackburn Lake Primary School. Hey, Maimuna. Um, why did Japan attack Darwin and not other places? This is actually Maimuna's question. It's something that a lot of people have mm. been asking. Um, and not other places like Melbourne or Sydney. Um, I love you guys so much and have never missed an episode of BTN Newsbreak Classroom or AAR. Thanks, Maimuna. Thanks for watching and being a big fan of BTN. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for your question too. Yes, so the enough. interesting thing is that other parts of Australia were bombed. Um, there, including in Sydney, there was a submarine attack in Sydney um, in World War II as well, but um, it wasn't as bad as the bombing of Darwin. And I believe that, I don't know all of the details about it, but um, there was a submarine attack in Sydney, but um, our soldiers managed to um, intercept them before all of the damage wasn't was done. Wasn't it in Sydney? Oh, okay. Sydney Harbour. Yeah, it was in Sydney Harbour. That's the one. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and it was, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, really. and, yeah, and it also yeah, stretched all the way up to, to Newcastle. I think there was another one that happened in Newcastle. So yeah. that's interesting. If you're interested, go and look that up because that definitely did happen. Yeah, but the bombing of Darwin tracks. was chosen because... Uh, Darwin wasn't the only place either on the north of Australia, but the reason why the bombing of Darwin was important was because it was like a, a, a gateway for, for Australia to reach the rest of sort of Southeast Asia. And the way that Japan saw it was there were um, Australian soldiers, um, international soldiers who were allies, our friends in the war, um, and they used that as a meeting ground and sort of a place to store oil and army ships and all that sort of thing. So Japan wanted to bomb Darwin to take all of that stuff out and to try and make it really not comfortable to stay in Darwin so that their um, military operation wouldn't continue. Um, but uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Thanks for that. Okay, so Isabella from St. Kevin's. Isabella wants to know, how many times was Darwin bombed? Darwin was... Uh, so I spoke to a historian about this. He said Darwin was bombed uh, 64 times wow. over the course of a year and a half. So um, even though that's a long time, 64 bombings, you can imagine that's just like a, yeah, a lot of bombings. But um, the first and biggest bombing was on the 19th of February, the very mm -hmm. first one. The other ones were just to, um, yeah, were just uh, more attacks to try and make it less comfortable. And uh, yeah, they also caused a lot of damage too. Mm. Okay. Um, oh, another sort of numbers based question here. Uh, Trace from Port Melbourne Primary School hey, would Trace. like to know um, how many planes bombed Darwin? Do you know? Yeah, so in the f there were two raids on that first day. This It, it kind of gets quite numbery, but um, the, the 
two raids on that first day, all up there was about 240 planes. Um, but in the first raid alone, there was 188 planes. Wow. Yeah. So all uh, 188 planes. planes flying over one small town like Darwin must have been really overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. I have a question from uh, Thinusri. Thinusri? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I hope um, I got one of them right. From um, Manly Vale Public School. Um, mm-hmm. So, Thinusri? Thinusri would like to know. Please answer my question. You haven't done it before. Well, here we are. Oh. Were there any nuclear bombs in the bombings? Thank you, BTN. Uh, You're very welcome. Well, uh, no. In the bombing of Darwin, there weren't any nuclear bombs. Um, but I believe that's the reason why, um, uh, part of the reason why Japan pulled out of the war in the end was because Japan got the first nuclear bomb dropped on them in, in Hiroshima. So, mm. uh, but no, there were no nuclear bombs used in the bombing of Darwin. No, and I imagine, because you, if you tuned in last week as well, um, Tenozuri, you would know that, you know, we talked a little bit about that for sure. That was all about um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and we would definitely know more about it if we were uh, nuclear bombed, that's mm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas uh, the bombing of Darwin slips under the radar a little bit, which is still not, not great, really. We should always know about our history. Hmm. Um, okay, so um, you sort of answered this now, but Zach from Saltwater College in Melbourne. Hey, Zach. Um, what was the point of the bombing of Darwin? You sort of covered that all. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, so got more to say, go for it. Just, uh, yeah, so the bombing of Darwin was to try and make it really hard for the military in Darwin to do their job and to almost make them um, retreat because they were, Japan was afraid Australia was going to use Darwin as a launching pad and sort of jump into Japan's territory at the time. But so Japan just wanted to... Um, to De- to neutralise Darwin to make sure that there was Darwin wasn't going to be a problem for them. Hmm. Mm. Okay, Jack from Five Dock Public School. Hi, Jack. Hey, would Jack. like to know. Hi, BTN. I would like to know if the people were warned of the bombing, please. That's a good question because I spoke to someone who told me that there was one person. Ah, uh, there's a place just north of Darwin called the Tiwi Islands, and he radioed into Darwin as he saw the planes flying over, saying. I think there are some planes we should be worried about. Wow. But nobody really thought much of it because they actually thought that they were our friends' planes, allied planes. So wow, nobody, what a mistake. What a mistake. So nobody thought much about it. They did that big U-turn inland and came back towards Darwin. And the air raid sirens, which usually warn people that an air raid's coming, um, actually started, uh, actually sounded after bombs started dropping. Oh, scary. Yeah. That's yeah. scary. No warning. No. Um, okay, you might have, uh, might have said this earlier, but just in case, this is from Japanese from St. Clair's Primary School. Hey, Japanese, thanks for writing in. Was the bombing of Darwin the largest single attack ever, is what Japanese would like to know. Uh, in a, on Australian soil, yeah, but um, in the entire world, no. Um, but yeah, it's an important one for Darwin. It was the first time we were ever attacked by another country, and uh, it was yeah our biggest attack on our own country um, in the in the Second World War. Mm-hmm. So Layla from St. St. Anthony's Primary School, public school, pri- primary school, maybe I don't know. Glenn Huntley. So um, Layla wants to know. Hi, BTN. My question is, did any of the bombs drop on Broome as well as Darwin? I have a lot of family in Broome, so okay. that is why I would like to know. P.S. I love you, BTN, and I watch you every day. Well, thank you, Layla. Broome, yeah. Broome, Broome did get bombed, and uh, the bombing of Broome really? was um, on the 3rd of March idea. in 1942. It wasn't as big as the bombing of Darwin, but it still got bombed, and it was still disastrous for Broome. Broome was another small town at the time too. Um, wow. And uh, yeah, that so that happened, uh, how, what would that have been? Maybe two weeks after the bombing of Darwin, the 3rd of March. So mm. Darwin was the 19th of February. So sort of roughly after that, yeah. Um, so yes, Broome did. And a whole bunch of Northern Australian towns got bombed as well, um, including uh, Townsville in Queensland by really? um, the Japanese air raids yeah so just did not know this Isn't that's that right interesting? I heaps of this. stuff yeah mm, it's good to know um okay sophie from michelin primary school i feel like i've asked sophie's question before actually maybe last oh. week so, um not this question but you know another time i think sophie's yeah. a um long time 
AAR watcher. Hi BTN, I'm Sophie. My question to you guys is, was Darwin a popular town mm. or was it like a small town with the fuel and a naval base? Mm. Yeah, that's good. Well, uh, Darwin was a pretty small town. Uh, it still is the smallest capital city, city in Australia. Mm. But back then, just before the war sort of broke out or as it was breaking out, um, a lot of families, um, women and children were moved away from Darwin and the only people that stayed were mostly military, soldiers, people to defend the town. So um, by the time the bombing of Darwin came around, the town's population was quite small and uh, most of the people there were just essential services, people working in the post office, people working on the ships and in the military and that sort of thing. Um, I'm sure there would have been some other people there, but for the most part, it was a very military town in World War Two. Mm. Mm. Why was that? What I missed the beginning was that because they moved. Did they move they people moved, out? Yeah, they moved women and children ah, out earlier, yeah, sort of as a yeah, as a bit of a warning, yeah, or precaution. A yeah. precaution. Yes, that happened in uh, in a lot of places in the world. Yeah. Kids, you know, were actually um, shipped off to safer spots. Happened actually in um, in Europe as well, in in lots of different places. Yeah, mm. um, because did you know that? So my family on my mum's side um, is from this little island called Jersey, and it's in the Channel Islands between France and England. And oh. um, the Channel Islands were the only um, part, well, they're technically part of the UK um, to be occupied by the Germans in World War Two. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah my uh, my grandmother went over to um, I, I think England to to um, help with the war effort whereas my auntie great auntie um she was there during the occupation and wow. yeah so she had some interesting stories as well and you would have seen if you watched the show uh some of our btn reporters grandparents talking about their war their mm -hmm. war stories as well it's mm. it's a really good idea actually I, I talked to my great aunt before she died and and learned about some incredible stories that she had about um you know the nazis and being occupied um so definitely go and talk to someone in your life um, if, if, you, if you know that they uh, were alive during World War II, even if they were, were a kid, um, you know, it's really, really interesting. Yeah. Don't you think? It's a really good way to learn about history and it it's, um, means so much more when you're hearing it from someone that, yeah. you know, was actually yeah. there and alive at the time. So That's right. make sure you go and do that. It's, I really recommend it. Um, okay, so let's see. I have a question from Joshua from Bayswater North Primary School. Josh. Um, how did Darwin try to defend its own city? Mm, all right, well, that this is another good one because we have another video as well. But um, Darwin was a little bit, uh, well, it was definitely a military city, but in some ways it was a little bit underprepared for something like um, a, a surprise air raid. It was a surprise. Um, sometimes there's warning given before bombings happen, but other times it's a complete surprise, and this was mm. a complete surprise. Um, but at the time, Darwin was building big guns on the coast um, that would hopefully w were built to to shoot down e enemy airplanes. Mm. The only problem was they didn't get them finished in time, and so by the time all the air raids were mm. over, they still hadn't finished their guns. But we'll show you the short video yeah. now. Big gunning placements, like the one behind me here, were built to defend Darwin against any more air raids. But this one was only finished in February of 1944, three months after the final air raid on Darwin. So it never fired a shot at an enemy aircraft. The line that the, uh, the government was uh, taking was saying that we're, we're defending Darwin. We're putting big guns in there so the, uh, no, no attacking force will come anywhere near the place. And as we know now, many, many, many years afterwards, the Japanese never had an invasion plan for Darwin or Australia. Um, they, they just wanted to take Darwin out as a marshalling point uh, for military forces to assemble and to get ready to attack the Japanese. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We're a little delayed to come back then, sorry. Um, so, um, lots of questions. We've got hundreds and hundreds of questions again today, guys. Um, so, this is from Charlie from Ranella Primary School. Charlie from last week. I'm pretty sure it's the same Charlie because you said another hat. I see Amelia. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Yeah. Sorry I'm not wearing a hat. Oh, you should be. Yeah. Uh, love your videos. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks for tuning in again. Yeah. Um, Charlie says, what were the pros and cons of the bombing? 
Mm, sort of covered this, I suppose, because yeah. you've given a little bit of... Well, can you talk about... Well, you haven't talked about the Japanese side much. I mean, yeah. can you talk about why they would might potentially want to um, bomb? Well, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it depends what side you're on, really. But I, if from a Japanese perspective, why Darwin was so... Um, interesting was because we had so many military we had a, a RAF base in Darwin with all of the military aircraft we had like uh, something like 40 boats big ships in our in the Darwin Harbour um, there was actually a big net that stretched across the Darwin Harbour from one side of the, the port to the other so I'm using the wrong word there but it's a big net made out of wire that was basically to stop submarines from coming into the port of Darwin wow. and uh, when when you see it in real life if you visit a place called East Point in Darwin which is actually where that last video was shot you can see the start of the um, net but obviously they've removed the rest of it and uh, and so yeah for many reasons Darwin was really important as a strategic place for military reasons mm. yeah so that's probably why it was so interesting for the to for the, the enemy for yeah the enemy. For, for the enemy of australia at the time exactly um are there this is from luca from bo morris primary school hey luca are there still remains of the bombing in darwin yeah well we saw that piece of the shrapnel and uh there's uh some sunk boats in the darwin in the uh in the sort of waters around Darwin. I've never seen them myself because they're quite deep. It's a very deep body of water. Um, and uh, in terms of things in place, most things got removed after the war in a clean-up effort. But um, there are obviously pieces of bombs that you can find in museums, lots of old relics that are in uh, the military museum. Um, but in terms of uh, walking around and finding um, sort of artefacts from the war, you might not come across too many. However, uh, maybe 20 years ago, my old history teacher said that she once took her class, uh, so it would have been high school class, down to the mangroves near the school, where some of her students found this old rifle belonging to a Canadian soldier. And uh, they cleaned it up, they put it on a piece of board, and um, the school looked after it for many years, and now it's at the military museum. Wow. So sometimes you can find stuff you never would have expected to find, but uh, you'd have to go looking. <laughs> That's such a cool story. Yeah, mm, yeah. wow. Um, how big is Darwin, for those who don't know? That's from Jonathan mm. from Carlingford West Public School. Hey, Jonathan. Well, I wish I could show you a map. Maybe grab a map and just have a, have a look at it. It's quite a small place. It, How um, many people? How, what's the population? population now is really small still. It's, uh, I think it's about 130 or 150,000 people, yeah. which to put it into perspective, uh, Sydney City is something like 5 million people. Mm. Um, Adelaide's one point something million people. So, you know, we're in the millions, but in Darwin, we're still like only in the hundred thousand. So um, we're still very small, but uh, yeah, and we're quite spread out too. There's a lot of um, people that kind of live a bit out of town in rural areas all throughout the NT. Um, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't have oh, exact numbers, but hopefully that was rough, a rough idea of how small Darwin is. No, no, that's yeah. all right. And it would have been so therefore much smaller at the time. Oh, much smaller. Um, Samuel from St. Mary Magdalene in Chadston. Um, Samuel wants to know, did they launch planes to try to fend off the Japanese? Japanese mm, planes. That's a good question. And I don't know the answer to that one, I'm afraid. No. Um, I think because it was a surprise attack. Um, the, I think because there was time. a surprise attack, I don't think there was time. But uh, certainly on that first day, yeah. Mm. Mm, but I don't know the answer, I'm afraid. Um, Madison from Ranella Primary School. It was Charlie's Primary School too. Um, did one of your family members sadly pass away in World War Two? And that's a question. And please um, give F1 Giglio's class a shout out. Hey, F1 Giglio. How are you? Um, thanks for watching. Um, so, Madison, did one any of your, like, your grandparents no. or anything you know great grandparents Not, they didn't pass away in the war my be? great my great grandpa was in the war i think he was in the air force too but uh uh no none of my family that i know of passed away hmm. um fighting in the war no and none of my family were in darwin at the time Mm. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, where were they? Is it your Indonesian background? Were well, they in... I don't 
No, so no. it wouldn't have been Indonesian. It would have been my dad's side. So okay. they would have all been in uh, Victoria. Victoria. Mm. Oh, you're, you're mm. Victorian too. Um, so no, and I don't. No, no, no one that I know of in my family actually um, died um, in the war either in World War Two. Um, my uh, grandfather was fighting in the war, but he <gasps> survived. Um, and ended up marrying my grandmother, and who um, I mentioned she was she was um, I think she was driving ambulances. She was doing some oh, wow. some really amazing yeah. thing during the war, mm. um, and and they met. She she was doing that, and he was um, yeah, uh, also fighting in the war. And there you go. So wow. no, they they survived as well. But you can imagine it would be very difficult, um, you know, for for so many people, all of these people that were impacted, the entire world impacted by this war mm. in some way or another. Whether it was your family member that had to go away and fight, or um, you know, possibly died, or if you had to go and fight, or if you felt that you wanted to help, um, we didn't actually get to talk a lot about women in the war, um, and I think that's actually a really interesting topic that we'll have to cover in BTN at some stage, because mm-hmm. um, women had a really interesting role actually. Um, mm-hmm. Even though they uh, weren't off fighting, they were. Um, taking on all of the jobs that traditionally were done by men at the time Mm. um and so it was this thing where women kind of um yeah had to take over and learn all of these skills because they had to keep industry going and things like that um so yeah it's really interesting topic if you're interested in that make sure you have a look into it as well also a lot of indigenous australians fought as well and so you should definitely um learn more about that too and so we should absolutely do a story about that hopefully in the in the near future on btn too so look into that um, all right, let's see. Um, how far did the bomb spread? That's Olive from um, Elmore Vale Public School. I love the name Olive. Mm, yeah. So um, I don't know how far the bomb would have spread, but hopefully that bomb video from earlier um, where I spoke to that historian gave you a bit of an idea about how it basically this massive bomb as big as that one that we saw splinters off into heaps of little pieces that come out that big so you can imagine apparently they travel at the speed of sound like he said so they would have just gone everywhere um but how far exactly i don't know Mm. Mm. and rihanna from askham says why did japan want to attack australia um rather than other countries well we weren't alone but they wanted to not yeah but um but Australia was caught up in the war because we were part of the Allies. But um, mm. no, it definitely wasn't just us. But uh, yeah, interesting. No, definitely not. So um, you know, there was a lot of a lot of fighting all over the world, like I mentioned before. Yeah. Um, well, we are having to wrap it up pretty soon. But I just wanted to do a few little right. shout outs to right. whoever I can as quickly as I can. Shout out time. Um, shout out time. What's in my tea? Izzy from IGS International Grammar School. It's just tea, actually. Uh-oh. I don't even have any milk in there. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to I'll pour it on myself, so it's I'm going to show you. <laughs> tea bag you and water. You know what a cup of tea looks like, yeah. um, Izzy. Um, okay, um, BTN, you're my favourite news channel. That's from Adam from Alamanda College. Hello. Um, someone was that. telling you to cut your hair. That's a little mean. Oh, <laughs> cut your I hair first. your hair. <laughs> um, okay... Um, and let's say, all right, a big shout out to Renella Primary School, who I mentioned, new brief, sent us lots of questions. Elamore, um, Vale, as always. I've got Carlingford West, Bayswater North, Askham, as always. Wow. Mumba Park. So many shout outs. So many, so many. Um, Paige from Renella says, your number one fan. Thanks, Paige. Um, Oh, you know what? Rihanna from Askham has another good question. Why was Darwin the place for military things? Um, Why did they pick Darwin? Well, because, oh, that's a good question. It's a good question, Rihanna. A- as far as I understand, it was because the Darwin proximity? was so close yeah. to the rest of the world. And Darwin was chosen for a lot of things like the telegraph pole because it was so close to the rest of the world but it was still part of Australia. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, okay, and then let's see, International Grammar School. Um, I don't know if anyone said that they were from Darwin in the end. I can't quite tell. But thank you so much, 
I'm having technical dis- issues where it's freezing on me, so we better um, finish this off. St. Mary Magdalene's Chadston as well. You've sent us lots of questions too. Thank Thanks for you, questions. everyone, and well Thanks done, for watching. Nat. Thanks for answering yeah. all. Um, and we will be back as usual next week, next Friday. So make sure you tune in for another Ask a Reporter. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, it won't be about war, and it'll be about something a little more happy. <laughs> We can all hope for that because I know it's a difficult topic, but yeah. hopefully you found it um, interesting these past couple of weeks anyway and you've learned something. Um, and keep doing your own research if you want to know more. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Bye. See Have ya. a good weekend. You Stay too. Safe. Bye. Bye.